Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel for Mac 2019. In this module I'm going to speak to you about a really important concept that you need to get your head around when you're working in Excel and that is relative versus absolute referencing. Now the best way for me to explain this to you is really just to show you an example of both. So we're going to start out with relative referencing. Now relative referencing is the default in Excel. So what do we mean by relative referencing? Well let's take a look at this example that we have here. So I have a list of employee names, I have their departments, their hire dates, their years of service, their salary and then we have a column that says increase. So all of these lucky people are going to get an increase in their salary. And what I first want to do is I want to input what their new salary is going to be in column G. So this is a reasonably straightforward calculation. We've seen those basic calculations that we can do. So all I want to do is do a very simple sum calculation where I add up the data in E2 and the data in F2. So we're going to start out with equals and we're going to say sum going to open my parentheses and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we want to add E2 plus F2 and close my parentheses. So very very simple and straightforward. I'm going to hit my enter key and there we go I get my total and if I just do a quick visual check I can see that yes that is correct. Now I need to do the same for all of the other employees. So I could go through and repeat that method for each of the employees, but that is quite time consuming. A much quicker way is to click on this calculation in G2 and use that autofill handle. So if you remember, we looked at this previously, you can also use it for when you want to copy down formulas. So I essentially want the same formula to apply in each of these cells. So I'm going to grab that little green square in the bottom right hand corner until I get that small black cross and I'm going to just drag down. And what you'll see here is that Excel does in fact copy that formula down and again if I do a very quick visual check I can see that yes these numbers all look correct to me. So how is that working? Let's look at the formula that we have in G3. And if we glance up into the formula bar, you can see it says equal sum E3 plus F3. So I can see that this is adding E3 and F3. In the next total down, the total that we have in G4, I can see that this is adding E4 and F4. These two cells just here. So as I've copied it down, Excel knows that it has to adjust those cell references based on the fact that I'm moving down a row each time. That is what we call relative referencing. And as I said, this is the default in Excel. Now, what if we have a slightly different situation? So I'm actually going to delete out all of these figures that we just added. So what if I input over here 2.2 percent. So instead of a fixed number of increase, everybody is going to get an increase of 2.2 percent. So how are we going to do that? So I'm going to do this calculation to work out the increase when we're increasing the salary by 2.2 percent. Now this does work slightly different, so I'm going to say equals sum. I'm going to say E2 but when we're dealing with a percentage, we need to multiply. And in Excel, the operator or the symbol for multiplication is an asterisk. I'm then going to select cell J2, close my parentheses and hit enter. So now I can see what the increase is when we're applying 2.2%. So I'm going to do exactly what I did previously, and I'm going to drag this fill handle down to fill in the rest and we have zeros. So why has this not worked in the same way? Well, let's look at this second one and see what Excel is trying to do. I can see here it says E3 multiplied by J3. So E3 is this cell here, that's okay. 
But where's J3? J3 is just here and it's a blank cell. I suspect I'm going to find exactly the same if I pick a random one from this list. So this one just here. It says E7 multiplied by J7. So it's doing E7 and it's multiplying it by J7, which is also blank. And that's because when you drag a formula down, by default, Excel will perform relative referencing. It's going to assume that you want it to move the cell references down as you drag. And that is perfectly fine when we're using the salary, but not fine when we want to always refer to this specific cell. So what we need to do is we essentially have to lock this cell in place so that Excel always refers to this cell in the formula. So how do we do that? I'm going to go back in and just delete this out. We're going to say equals sum. I'm going to select E2. I'm going to multiply and I'm going to select J2 but I need to add something else which will make it absolute or locked. And to lock a cell, you add dollar signs in front of the row and the column. So you could go in manually and add those dollar signs, or you can press the F4 key on your keyboard to automatically put those in. Now again, on a Mac, you might have to hold down the function button and press F4 for that to work. So now you can see I have $J, $2, and that essentially locks that formula or locks that cell in place. I can now close my parentheses, press enter, and now when I drag this formula down, I should find I get the correct results. And again, if we just look at one of these randomly, I can see here it says E7 multiplied by J2. So it's always referring to this particular cell. That is called absolute referencing, and that is the difference between absolute and relative. Now, before we move on, just to finish off this spreadsheet, I now need to calculate the new salary. So that is going to be a straightforward calculation of salary plus increase. So equals sum E2 plus F2. Close my bracket. And I'm absolutely fine to use relative referencing in this case and I can drag that down and we have our totals. So hopefully that illustrates to you the difference between the two and it is a really important concept to get your head around and you will find yourself using absolute referencing quite a lot as you work through Excel. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload and click over there to get the complete Excel for Mac 2019 beginners course. And click over there to watch the complete set of Excel Mac videos in this playlist.